In today's session, we are going to see how to navigate in Excel. We use Excel every day and we are moving from one place to another, but Excel can get very complex. Many sheets, multiple blocks of data, large amount of data, all kinds of things can go wrong. So how do you efficiently do it? We have five topics to cover. So let's dive straight into the topics. So what are we going to see today? We are going to see five simple but extremely powerful ways of navigating in Excel. Let's start with horizontal scroll. Here I have data which has many columns and we know how to scroll, right? Scrolling is such a natural, normal thing, right? We know how to scroll, but what is the problem there? One big problem. If, if you want to scroll, right now I'm seeing rows 1 to 21. If I want to see the next set of rows, we press page down and then it starts from 21 onwards. That's vertical scrolling. Fine. But what about horizontal scrolling? So <coughs> I have many, many columns here. and. Uh, how do I scroll horizontally? Most of us actually press right arrow, right arrow, right arrow in number of times. And then when you reach the end, one more right arrow is just going to get you one more column in view. What happened in page down? The next page came in view. So we want something similar to happen when we are doing horizontal scroll. And the concept is very simple. Page down is vertical. Alt key page down is horizontal right now, alt page down it is showing me up to column g alt page down will show me h onwards and now alt page down will show me n onwards it's such a simple thing it has been there for 30 years but most people know how to scroll vertically they don't know how to scroll horizontally now you know so use it to your advantage simple and effective now let's look at hyperlinks. Generally, we use hyperlinks where? In Word or in email or in PowerPoint maybe. Hyperlinks are also equally useful in Excel. When do we need to use hyperlinks in Excel? Excel files can get very complex. We have multiple sheets. In each sheet, we have multiple blocks of data, pivot tables or uh, charts. So many different things. And now you're sending a big file to someone. You're sending it as a link or as an attachment, doesn't matter. Now I open the file. I have no clue what is there in the file. Which sheet is going to open? The sheet which was open when you saved the file last time. So first of all, you have to be careful about that. Make sure when you're sending a file or a link to someone, what you want them to see first, that should be the sheet, which should be the primary sheet when you are saving and closing the file. Even if you do that, if I have 20 sheets, how do I know where to go as a different person? So that's what we will see now. What we will do now is look at a simple Excel file. I have three sheets here. One is plan, one is forecast, one is actual. And in each of them, I have total of plan, total of forecast, and total of actual. Fair enough. Now, I want to send a table of contents. Table of contents is a very common concept for a Word document. In fact, yesterday I showed you how to do it for email as well, for linking the emails. But we can also use that to our advantage in complex Excel files. So when someone clicks on plan, it should actually go and open the sheet and so on for forecast as well as actual. How do we do that? Very simple. Insert hyperlink. Depending on the version of Excel, you will see this a little differently. In older versions of Excel, there was only one button called link. In the new version of Excel, they have a drop down which shows you recent files. 
but at the bottom it does show you insert link and what is the shortcut control k so remember control k works across windows control k now are we hyperlinking to a web page no we can't we don't want to place in the document and then it actually gives you all the sheets so that's how i'll quickly do this for sheets plan forecast and actual so far so good now this is good now make sure when you close this file this page is open so when someone opens it this sheet i mean they will see this then they can click on it and directly go to that sheet very good now if you really want to go one step further you should also have a back link so that people can go to the toc now toc itself is a sheet so what do you do you just put back and here you put a hyperlink to what toc and now i can copy this cell and paste it for forecast as well and paste it for plan as well so now we have a nice interactive way in which people can go back and forth so that's how you use hyperlinks to your advantage you can also use hyperlinks for named cells so this is a cell the name of the cell is e2 but if you want to you can actually give a name to the cell how do you give a name to the cell so let me call it just type it there plan total okay now i can use this somewhere else for example now if i want to go back to toc and someone clicks on plan total i don't want them to just go to the sheet i want them to go to that cell what do i do again control k and here you will notice that you get something called defined names which is plan total so now when i click here it's actually going to go to that cell the more easy you make for the other person to navigate the more they are going to get involved and look at your data and manage it better so that's all there is to it next there is something called end mode what does that mean end mode means what end mode means i have a block of data let's take the same data here and in this data i have my cursor is here and i want to go to the end of that row end of that row yeah i can i want to go there or i want to go to the end of that column whatever so there is a very important thing you have to look at which is called status bar what is status bar at the bottom whatever you see is the status bar it always says ready but you have to notice it now what am i going to do i want to tell excel i want to go to the end of the row or the column something like that so there is something called end mode you press and release the end key it's not like alt tab or control c you don't press it together with anything else you just press and release the end key and now notice what happens what is it saying next to ready now it's saying end mode what does that mean now this will remain in that end mode till you press some key and that key has to be up down right or left so now i'm going to press the right arrow now notice what happens the end mode went away it understood i want to go to the end of the row because i press the right button that's how that's how it works so that is the idea of using this concept what is the concept we have cursor somewhere you decide where you want to go and end let's say i want to go to the last row down arrow okay from here i want to go to the first column so again press end left arrow now i am going to go to the first row again press end and click up arrow like that you can do and the best part is suppose you want to not just move from one place to another but you also want to select on the way then while you are doing all this keep the shift key pressed for example i am somewhere in between and i want to select 
entire data from where I want to select the entire data from this row 8 to the bottom. Of course, I can do it with mouse, but with the end mode, how do you do it? So look at the bottom status bar. I'm going to say end, and it is in end mode. Now I press shift and down arrow, it selects. So while you are moving the cursor, if shift key is pressed, whatever comes between the starting point and the ending point gets selected. Generally, that works across office. So that's about end mode. Now, the fourth thing is go to special. What does that mean? Go to special still is a large amount of area. 1 million rows, 16,000 columns. That's just one sheet. Technically, you can have 256 sheets. So lots of space to navigate. Is different than PowerPoint or Word. In Word, it's a linear document. Page one, page two, page last. In slides, page one, slide one, like that, last slide. There is no horizontal thing. In case of Excel, it can become very daunting. So when you want to go from one place to another in Excel, there is a special way of going quickly from one place to another. That is what is called go special. The shortcut for that is Control G or F5. F5 is usually used for refresh. I know that, but in Excel, F5, function key 5, has a special meaning. So let's see, go to. Let's start simple. Let's say I have this data and I have some empty rows and I want to delete all the empty rows. Now, if I select the rows like this, one cell at a time, of course, I can right click in the selection and say delete and say entire row. That will work. But suppose this was 5000 rows. Am I really going to do it manually? No. So what do you do? You select this entire thing and now you want Excel to select only the blank cells. So what am I saying? Go to go to means select basically go to blank cells. So where is this thing called go to? Control G, okay? It says, where do you want to go? Notice all the common references we have used earlier are all here. I can also type something randomly. Any cell will work. So if I say go to A1, it will go to A1. If I type a range A1 colon B5, no problem. It will even select it for me. So if you want to quickly select a large range, this is a good thing, but very often we don't know the cell reference. So that is where go to special comes into picture. So go to special works in two ways. If nothing is selected, nothing means only one cell is selected. Go to special will work on the entire sheet. So now if I say go to special and I say select uh, blanks, what is it going to do? It's going to go all over the place in Excel in that sheet and select all the blank cells. That's not very useful. Now, if I already have some selection, then I go to special, then it's going to work only within the selection. So now when I say go to blanks, it is like telling Excel, I have already got an area of interest. Within that, you select blanks. Now, this is the same effort, whether there were four blanks or 40,000 blanks. And now you can delete entire row and clean up bad data. So that's a very good feature. Now, let's see some more stuff. One of the things people get confused with in Excel, I send a file to someone and uh, they overwrite my formulas. It's a very, very common problem. So it's a good idea to highlight which cells have a formula. You should have some formatting. Actually, Microsoft has given you the formatting. If you go to Home tab, Styles, you see Microsoft recommends that anything which has a calculation should have this formatting. Anything where you expect people to enter data should have this formatting. This is globally applicable in a default Excel sheet for last God knows how many years. So this is a good way to standardize and set expectations visually, which says this is input, this is calculation. But now I want people to have those formatting 
So for example, here plant and machinery is an input. So it should have which style? Input style. Core products is a formula. So which style should it have? Calculation. But I don't want to do it manually. So again, go to special comes into picture. So I say go to special. Okay. And then I say formulas. We can even refine which kind of formulas. But right now we will say formulas. So it selected all the formulas across the sheet. And now in one stroke, I can apply input like this. Simple and effective. Similarly, I could have selected this part. Again, gone to go to special. This time I would have said constant. Constant means what? Things which do not have formulas. And here I don't want text logical error. I only want numbers. So it selected only the numbers. And I could have now applied the input formatting or the formula formatting, whatever I want to do. So that's how you select what you want. In this case, I have selected formulas. I will say calculation and again go to special constants, only numbers because that's where we want to enter. And here I'll apply input. So that's how you make your Excel files more legible. And then finally, another simple but very critical thing called formula navigation. Formula navigation means what? We have formulas within formulas within formulas. How do you navigate? So how do you navigate in a formula if it is a complex formula? So let's build a complex formula and see how it works. Thus for demo purpose, I'm just going to create a formula. If something, let's say this is greater than five, then do something else. Otherwise, now I want to check something else. So maybe another value. Okay, this is a very simple formula. Now, sometimes what happens, I am now editing the formula. And in the formula, I want to change the another value part. Most of us are going to do this. We are going to go there and manually select that part like this. So if this was a formula and I wanted to change another value to something, most of us will do this. Don't do that. Why? Because there is a better way. So I'm sure all of you have noticed that when you click in a formula, you get this tool tip. Now another important thing, sometimes the formula can get very long, in which case this tool tip itself overlap so you can actually move it away if it is coming in the way that's number one second depending on where your cursor is that part of the syntax gets bold so if i am here value if true is bold if i am here value if false is bold fine now how do you use it for navigation very good suppose i want to change another value and this was not a simple thing like another value that could have been another formula. What do I do? I'm sure you have noticed it, but it didn't reach your brain. When by mistake you hover, these things become hyperlinks. The formula name or function name becomes hyperlink and parameters also become hyperlink. If you click on the function name, what is it going to do? It's going to open the help for that function. That's not what we want. So it opened help for a function. That's okay. But on the other hand, if you are navigating a formula and click on one of them, it actually selects it. That's how you navigate a formula. So now if I wanted to change it to another value, I could have simply gone and said, if let's say this value is greater than thousand, then something or something. And then of course I have to put a bracket, whatever. So now if I was navigating this formula, notice this formula is a logical test level. This itself is going to get selected. So that's how you use smart navigation in Excel. So that's it for now. I know I went little ahead of time, but I guess this was useful.